Hello and welcome to our tutorial for mugs and middens canvas painting. Before we get started, make sure to cover your workspace with paper. We also recommend wearing a smock or art clothes to protect yourself from the acrylic paint, which can be difficult to remove from fabrics and surfaces. In addition to the supplies from your kit, you're gonna to wanna to grab some water and paper towels from your home for rinsing and drying brushes. All right, let's get started. So for the first step of our project, we're gonna be working in the background, which is all the space around the mugs and mittens. If at any point you wanna change colors or do your own thing, by all means, you can always get creative. Don't feel like you have to do this tutorial exactly how we're doing it. So we're gonna to add to our mixing card some of the deep red from the kit and also some of the black. And we're gonna be using these two colors. We're sort of gonna be going back and forth and adding them both into our background to create almost a, a black red that's gonna go all around our design. All right, so as you can see, now that we've started painting this sort of bottom corner here, as we apply the red and the black, we're mixing them together on the canvas. If this doesn't seem doable to you, you can always mix your red and black together on your mixing palette and then just apply them, you know, as one solid color. It's kind of fun though, just to dip into the red and dip into the black and go back and forth and, and kind of do that mixing on the canvas. You're going to notice too, as we work around towards the edges, I'm going to tip my canvas up so that uh, whatever color I have on the front of my canvas, I'm also wrapping around onto the sides, onto the edges, right? So I'm talking about the vertical, four vertical sides of the canvas. When you hang this up on the wall and these edges are done, it gives your canvas a nice finished look, just in the, in the event that you decide not to frame this artwork at the end. This can give your unframed artwork a nice finished look. So we do recommend doing this as you move your way around your canvas.
All right, when you feel satisfied with your background, you're gonna go ahead and rinse that big brush out, get it nice and clean. If you need to take your brush to the sink to do that, that's fine too, or if you're able to do it in your water bowl, great. And then you're just gonna go ahead and dry that off on your paper towels. For the next step of the project, we're gonna be working on the inside of the coffee cup. So in the area where the actual coffee is going to be. So for this next step, we're gonna need a little bit of the dark brown and also some of the lighter brown that you have in your kit. So you can go ahead and add those to your mixing tray, just a little bit of each. I'm gonna stick with my big brush for this next step, but if you need to switch out to your smaller one, you can always do that, whatever is comfortable to you. We are gonna need a little bit of white for this step as well, so if you'd like, you can go ahead and add that to your mixing tray at this point. That way you don't have to do it later. All right, so we're just gonna be adding a teeny bit of that dark brown into our lighter brown. We're trying to create a coffee color. So depending on how much milk you like in your coffee, you may wanna keep this on the darker side or go a little lighter if you're a light and sweet kind of person. And for now, we're just filling in this coffee area with a solid coat of this light brown. you're happy with the coffee area on your project you can go ahead and rinse out that brush again get it nice and clean and dry it off on the paper towels you should still be able to see the outline of the heart that is on the inside of the coffee area we're going to swap out to our smaller brush and we're going to be filling in that heart that's right in the middle there It's gonna mix together with the brown coffee area that we just painted, and that's fine. At the end of the project, we're actually gonna be going back and putting a second coat on this. So don't worry if it gets a little bit discolored, it's totally cool. Also with our white brush, and with also with our white and the small brush, we're gonna to wanna to add a little bit of a ripple effect that goes around this heart. So just some movement in our coffee Nothing crazy, just a couple of curved lines that go around where this heart is. I'm gonna start out using my small brush, but I'm actually gonna go back in with my big brush just to blend a little bit. And you can kind of play around and see which of those two brushes you like best for this step. But this is just a little subtle ripple in our delicious light and sweet cup of joe here.
right, so I got my brushes nice and clean. I've added my next color to the mixing palette here. So for the next step, we're gonna be mixing together this, uh, this green color and the white, okay? We're gonna be painting each section of our cup one by one. The reason we're gonna do each section separately is so that we can kind of give it a little bit of shading and uh, we don't lose the line. So we're clear like on which part is the handle, which part is the inside of the cup and which part is the outside of the cup. So you're gonna see as we go through, we're gonna be doing the same step on each section. We're gonna be painting it a solid color and then going back in with a little bit less white and a little bit more of a deeper color to kind of shade that area so that we can see the difference between that section and the next section. So right now I'm just taking a little bit of the deeper color and I'm just going right along the line between the handle and that inside rim of the cup. And I didn't wash my brush, I just kind of wiped it off on the paper towel and I'm gonna repeat these steps again. So I'm gonna use the lighter color and fill in and then you're gonna see I'm gonna go back with the deeper color and do some shading. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the big part of the cup.
So we have all the sections of our cup painted and shaded. We're gonna go in now and add some highlights. So to create a highlight, we're using the same color, but just adding a little bit more white. So the first section we're gonna highlight is just this top edge of the handle of the mug. I still have my small brush, but you can try whichever brush feels comfortable to you. I'm gonna go back in with my little bit of a bigger brush. It does help you blend a little bit. So probably gonna end up going back and forth a little bit with my two brushes just to get it exactly how I like. The next section we are gonna shade is this rim that is around the front edge of the cup. And it's gonna wrap right around the back, right around the tippy top. So we're starting sort of in front of our coffee and then we're going all the way around to the back. This is really gonna accentuate what is the rim of the cup. I would definitely stick with your small brush for this one. And make sure that you're making your highlight color different enough from the colors that are pre-existing on your canvas. You really want this to stand out. You wanna really be able to see this rim and the highlight on the handle as well. If it starts to blend together too much and, and you feel like it's mixing and you're losing your highlight a little bit, just wipe your brush off on, on your paper towel. You, no need to wash it, just to get the excess paint off of there so that you can really, you know, kind of layer this color on top of the deeper color versus having it mixed together. With the big brush, we're just gonna add a couple of highlights onto this big area of the coffee cup. The reason we're swapping out to our big brush is just so that we can blend a little more. This highlight isn't gonna be as um, dramatic as the one that we just did. It's just a little bit here in the middle and a little bit towards the bottom. So our cup area is done. It looks great. Our brushes are clean and we're going to be moving on into the mitten area. Now, if you look at the images that are in the beginning and the end of this video, the mittens have a lot of detail on them. So it's kind of up to you how much detail you want to add to your mittens. We're going to keep it pretty simple in this tutorial, but you can always take it to the next level by adding more patterns or even like a cool knit kind of, you know, texture would be amazing. For the purposes of our video, we are going to be starting out with the other shade of red that was in your kit. So this is like the bit brighter red, a little bit lighter. And the first thing we're going to do is just fill in the mittens with just a nice solid coat of red. Before this red starts to dry, we're gonna wanna dip in to that deeper red color that we used in the first set for the background and put some shading on our mitten. 
So this shading is going to go down in the bottom one third of the mitten. And you can watch, it's kind of going to just scoop down towards the bottom and then taper off as it moves up. And we're going to go ahead and shade that little thumb area as well. And once we're happy with the way this mitten looks, we're going to pop across to the right hand side and repeat these steps for the second mitten.
All right, mittens are all shaded, looking good. We are gonna use our last color that we haven't used yet, which is this very deep blue color. And this is uh, one of the colors that we're gonna be using for the details on our mittens. We're also gonna need white. So if you don't have any left from previous step, you can go ahead and add some white back onto your palette. So I have my teeny brush. So we have three brushes, large, medium, and this is the teeny tiny sort of detail brush. We're gonna be using this tiny brush and some white to add these stripes to the mitten. Now you can see my hand, my pinky finger is kind of popped out there and, and it's sort of acting as something that is holding my hand steady as I'm painting these small lines. So a lot of people in class, you know, they get stressed out when it's time to paint a line and you know, their hand is wiggly, totally get it. So this is my tip, just pop that pinky finger out and, and kind of use it as a something that keeps the rest of your hand steady. And that's really gonna help you get a straight line. So if you need a little practice, you can always do it on your paper before you get started, but try that pinky finger trick.
All right, so our big white areas are done, our white lines, and now we're gonna fill in between those spaces that we made with a little bit of a blue stripe. So mixing together a little bit of that blue with some white, and I'm gonna go ahead and just make tiny vertical stripes or horizontal stripes all along in between all of the white areas that we created. just coming up on the last couple stripes here and as mentioned earlier you could get very creative with the texture on your mittens I'm gonna keep it simple and just leave mine like this I'm happy with the way it looks and at this point I would say if you have any other finishing details you want to add this is a good time to do that sign your name add any other highlights or shading that you may like but otherwise I just want to thank you so much for joining us today and we hope that you join us in the future for another fun painting tutorial. Have a great day, everybody.